The world just needs more chainsaw-wielding, blood-spattered Nicolas Cage movies. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Steph Koza, and today I am reviewing Mandy. Ooh, also wanted to let you guys know that from now on, I will be posting a video every single Friday. I've already been doing it for the past two or three weeks, but I just wanted to like officially announce that that will be happening. It will be continuing because I want to give you guys consistent content every single week. Occasionally there will be more than one a week, but there will definitely at least be one on a Friday, no matter what. Anyways, this movie, <laughs> Oh my god. This was probably the most exciting, invigorating, interesting, entertaining movie-going experiences I have had all year. Mandy is directed by Panos Cosmatos, Cosmatos, Panos, Panos. Not really sure how to pronounce his name, but he is great at filmmaking, as we have learned. This is only the second movie he has ever made, which is incredible to me because he's just accomplished what every filmmaker strives to accomplish, which is just like instantly knowing what to do. So early in his film career and he's already made a masterpiece. His other movie was Beyond the Black Rainbow from 2010. I have not seen that one, but I definitely want to after seeing Mandy. Definitely gonna check that out. But Mandy is set in 1983. It stars Nicolas Cage, who plays a character named Red Miller. And he lives in this kind of primal wilderness with the love of his life, Mandy. And they both just kind of seem like broken, haunted people who have had kind of a dark past and now they're just living this life of like silence and serenity in this sort of abandoned forest kind of setting. It's a little bit creepy. They also live right next to Crystal Lake, which I think might be a little bit of a homage to the Jason Voorhees movies. There's a lot of little things in this movie that are definitely like sort of a love letter to the 80s. Like there's a lot of subtle references, nothing like super in your face, but it's all there and you can kind of feel it and sense it and i think if i were to watch this movie just coming across it on tv i would for sure think that it's an 80s movie it looks like an 80s movie it feels like an 80s movie nicholas cage hasn't really aged since the 80s so like it's fine it totally works so basically without giving too much away there's this group of weird hippie super religious kind of crazy tripped out on LSD people, and their leader decides that he wants Mandy. He just has to have her. He sees her on the street and he's like, I need this woman in my life. And so he and these like creepy Mad Max looking underworld biker gang dudes kidnap her. They take her from Nicolas Cage and then just all hell breaks loose and he goes on the craziest, wildest revenge mission I've ever seen in my life. This movie is wild. It is insanely violent and disturbing, but also beautiful. Like, it's disturbing in a way that you can't not look at. It is like ethereally beautiful. The visuals are amazing. There are so many really intriguing, interesting shots, weird kind of twisted shots where the lighting is kind of weird or like shots will merge together. The colors are so beautiful. It's very red, lots of like deep reds and blues and like lots of gels and the lighting is really intense. Very, very artsy. The visuals alone of this movie is just an, a masterpiece. Don't even care about the plot. Just watch it for the visuals. They're beautiful. It is 80s horror kitsch meets pulp revenge flick, and I loved every blood spattered second of it. It really is such a love letter to this 80s pulp horror generation of films. Like, we have a plot that's kind of crazy, and it honestly doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Like, it's pretty straightforward, but a lot of it is just like sort of out of nowhere. It's like, why? where did these people come from? Why is the world like this? I don't know, doesn't matter. That's where we are. And that is a very like 80s, 70s pulp horror thing to do. It also has the like spiritual hippie children of the corn group of misfits. It's got a Mad Max looking biker gang of villains, weird 80s mac and cheese advertisements, really heavily stylized cartoon dream sequences that are like 
basically just weird 80s cartoons. Heavy metal and an eerie synth score, heavy on the gels and the bright color correction. It really reminded me of like cult horror flicks from the 80s and from the 70s, like Suspiria. It reminded me so much of Suspiria, like the colors and the style and just everything about it was very reminiscent of that movie and movies like it. And then we have Nicolas Cage's memed out crazy version of Ash from Evil Dead, basically. <laughs> he's got a chainsaw, he's covered in blood, he's just destroying crazy evil. And honestly, I think this movie was made for Nicolas Cage. I, I could not picture this film with anyone else playing the lead role because it just would be weird. Like it wouldn't, it wouldn't have worked with anyone else. He just has this weird thing about him where he can be crazy and just ridiculous and kind of funny without really trying to be funny. He's got the crazy eyes, you know, that like crazy Nicolas Cage face that he does. But for some reason it worked. It worked so well. I feel like it's been so long since I saw a movie with Nicolas Cage and I was like, wow, that was great. But he really is good. Like he gives the performance of a lifetime. Like I don't think I have ever seen him as unhinged as he is in this film. And it's kind of a slow burn. Like first we see him and he's just this like haunted brooding man, doesn't really say that much. And then Mandy gets taken and he sort of awakens and he's really broken and trying to recover and trying to figure it out. And he's really vulnerable. And there's some weird scenes in the middle there where he's just broken and very vulnerable. And it kind of makes you love him even more, even though it's a little bit weird and kind of funny to watch. But then it makes his whole revenge mission and when he just snaps and goes crazy, it makes it so much more gratifying because the whole beginning of the movie, you're like, ah, oh, I just feel so bad for this guy and I love this guy. He's just, there's something about him that I just love. And then he just goes off the rails and it's fucking awesome. Oh my God. This movie was so much fun. Honestly, the most fun I've had at the movies in a very long time. It is a very slow build and you have to kind of just go with it because the first, I'd say the first two acts are very slow. It's a lot of like introducing you to these characters, familiarizing yourself with this weird world and this weird group of villains and introducing you to Mandy so that when she gets taken, you really feel that loss. And it's kind of just like you're riding this wave of anticipation until Nicolas Cage just goes crazy and starts murdering everyone with a chainsaw and a scythe that he makes himself. It's so amazing. I kind of felt like this movie was gonna be like, you know those like D-list horror movies that are just so bad that they're entertaining? Like you just, you want to watch them because they're bad? That's kind of what I thought this movie was gonna be. And there are definitely scenes where it sort of felt like it was almost ironically trying to be that, but it was really good. <laughs> like this movie is beautifully designed. It's so beautiful. It's so genius. It's very, very self-aware. And I just loved every second of it. I loved it so much. This might be my favorite movie of 2018. I don't know. It was, it was so, so great. So fresh, so unique, so unbelievably gripping. I want everyone in the world to watch this movie, especially if you are a horror fan or a fan of 80s movies or a fan of memes, because I guarantee you, even though this movie was great, there are so many scenes that I could just think of that would be a great meme. And I can't wait to get gifs from this movie and use them in my daily life. That's really where my priorities lie. But I think as far as a rating goes, I'm going to give Mandy a five out of five. It has been a long time since I gave a movie a five out of five, but it honestly just blew me away. It was so good. But that's it for my review of Mandy. Let me know if you guys saw Mandy. Let me know in the comments what you thought about it. I would love to talk about this movie in more detail. If you'd like to discuss it, you can become a patron on Patreon. There's a link in the description. When you become a patron, you're invited to our exclusive chat room where we talk about every movie that I review. And there will be a specific Mandy chat room where we can talk about all the spoilers and everything that happened. Discuss the shit out of it. I'm very excited about it. Also, I know this movie isn't playing everywhere. It's not all over the world. So if you do really want to See it. I'm pretty sure it's already available on iTunes or it will be within the next few days. Not really sure why, they just went straight from theater to internet, but it will be out there if you want to watch it. So I definitely recommend it. It is very worth it. <laughs> but that's it for my video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!